In this video, we're going to look at how to convert a single character into a number and the other way around. So what do we mean by single number? Well, it started off in the 1970s, 1980s. There were several systems competing against each other for how to encode data. So for instance, how to encode the capital letter A. And eventually the ASCII, which is A-S-C-I-I, the ASCII standard one. And this assigns a number of characters to numbers between 32 and around 127. It was then extended further to cope with additional characters in the Western European languages. So let's see what sort of values each of these characters has. Well, a space has the number 32. The letter A has the number 65. And if you can read hexadecimal, you can see that down there. And a lowercase a has the number 97. So if I go to my SSMS here and I say select char 65, that will give me the 65th character in the ASCII index, and that is a capital letter A. If I did 97, then that would also be an A, but a lowercase a. Now we can use these in combination with expressions. So, hello, which would give me hello, and then a lowercase a. So I could continue this, hello, my name is Philip. Now, why is a space number 32? A space is 32 because that's where the printable characters start. So what non-printable characters are there? Well, to partly answer this question, I have to change from results to grid to results to text because we won't see the answers in the grid. If I change this to char nine, for instance, we won't see any difference. Now let's change this to results to text and now execute that. And you can see that there is now quite a bit of a gap between the period and the rest of the string. Whereas if I just have a single space, you can see it's less. And you can see this even more if I put two of these characters in place. So what char nine is, it's a tab. So when you're in Microsoft Word and you click on tab. Now 10, is a line feed and 13 is a carriage return and often you'll see these together. So you can see there is a clear line gap there. Now, if I can convert a string into a number, I should be able to convert a number into a string. And you can do that with the ASCII. So ASCII takes a character and gives you the number. So the number in this case is 65. So there it is. So exactly the same number. Now I should point out if you put in a really long string, anything over one character, it will only take the very first character. Now the initial ASCII set went up to 127. There is an expanded one that goes up to 255 and it works basically the same. So if I say, what is the char of 156, then we get this character. And if I copy that, and say, how does this go back to being a number? We get an answer. Now I should point out some versions of SQL Server can't handle ASCII in terms of characters above 127. They give an incorrect answer. Now what if I wanted to go beyond 255? What if I wanted to go to any of these other characters here? And you can tell that these are the non-ASCII characters because they don't start U plus zero zero. So that's the ASCII character. So as soon as you get beyond that, those aren't ASCII characters. They are part of a wider code set called Unicode. And the way to be able to find that number is by saying equals Unicode or something. And we can go to a Unicode character by saying instead of char, n char. So if I wanted the 257th character, then we have it here. 
as an A with a line over it. Now do be careful if I go select Unicode and just type that in, then it's not going to give you the number 257. It's going to give you the number 97, which is a lowercase a. So why is that? It's because I have got a Unicode character, but I'm bringing back a normal string. If I want to say this is a Unicode character, then I need a capital letter N before the string. So that tells the computer it is indeed a Unicode character. So this is how you can convert numbers to strings and strings to numbers using the ASCII and the Unicode datasets. And we also have char 9 being a tab and char 10 and 13 being a line feed and carriage return. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.